so glad you came, Alan. <laughs> you're so, I mean, you're, you're so eloquent to describe these things that I struggle to find the words, you know? You're doing great. Yeah, you, you're you doing too. Great. You're doing great, too. <laughs> okay. So, once again, the uh, conversation about restorative justice and how individuals and communities can deal with violent crime, September 20th at 7 p.m. at the Nyack Center. And Jen... Uh, just mentioned that uh, come early at 6.30. 6.30, there'll be music, classical music, and Latin jazz music with Meyer Casales Trio. Um, yeah, right, and nice. Alan Levin, uh, once again, is also one of the speakers that will be um, on stage. Is this coming from us right. on stage? Nyack Psychotherapist of Sacred River Healing and uh, discussion facilitator for this event. Yeah. Right, after we have a series of speakers, then Jennifer could... Sure. Fill, fill in the details on that. We're going to have a community conversation, literally a conversation, where people will be able to express their own uh, experience, really, of something that has happened in their life, in their community, and be able to then hear from others also their experiences and in a non-threatening, non-judgmental kind of conversation that uh, we hope will be a very healing and promises to be a very healing and uh, enlightening uh, conversation. Right, and also on the panel uh, for the evening is Eve Eis Eisler. Eve Ensler, yes. Mm -hmm. Yes, we had done the uh, vagina monologues here last year. It's very good. And uh, she's a big advocate for um, uh, against violence. Yes. And uh, all the proceeds did go to a local uh, Rockland shelter and, and local local mm -hmm. organization. Uh, so sh tell us about this. Yes, Eve is great. Um, Eve has done a lot of work writing workshops at Bedford Correctional Facility, and I think that was her interest in this event. Um, she's just an amazing um, advocate to stop violence all over the world. So she um, is, a, is a perfect person, I think, to come. She's experienced personal violence. She's been witness to violence all over the world. She's, uh, I think she's going to be a great person. To she's, come. she's very, um, she's very aware of what's happening, a very conscious person. To be a yes. writer of, of such a great piece of work that is done uh, yeah. in the best spirit of of uh, spreading the word about nonviolence uh, is, is just an amazing a gift and uh, a creation that she has done. And she has uh, many followers. So I'm, I would be expecting a lot of people to show up to, uh, because of, of her presence there. I'm hoping so. Yeah. yeah, I'm hoping so. I think she's going to add a really powerful voice to the evening. And then you have several others and then who I, are going to speak. Yes, I do. And, and it's not on the flyer. Unfortunately, a late addition to the program was um, Tariq Green and Tony Earl Jr. of um, MADE Transitional Services. That's making a difference every day in Rockland County. They, they've both been formerly incarcerated. Um, and upon being released from prison, they, they began this organization because they realized that a lot of people, a lot of inmates, didn't have opportunities once mm -hmm. they were released from prison and so they started this organization where they go into the prisons and they work with inmates uh, preparing them to succeed in life mm -hmm. once they're released from prison and Tariq has talked to me personally and I, I think he's going to talk at the event about how the culture of poverty leads to mass incarceration and or is linked to mass incarceration and um, and, and sort of this idea that when he grew up in a poor community, when people would go off to prison and come home, they were really celebrated. And so there was this idea of heroism. Once you went to prison, you were a hero, or you returned from prison. And so that contributes also um, to these problems that... So Changing the consciousness and, and uh, the, the, the hope the whole environment, because, uh, you know, in, in, in America, the land of the free, it's also the most incarcerated, yeah. which is uh, this, t t you know, terrible uh, way to go through, um, you know, a country that is supposed to be free and, uh, you know, home of the brave, and uh, it just doesn't, it flies in the face of that, a and it should be more understood, of course, and m more money and support into training in the uh, system. 
so people are prepared to come out. But how how inventive of them to come up with this? Yeah. It's a classic story. Yeah. You know, start if if you know start your own uh, something, and and there you go, and show show other people yeah. Yeah. about the transformation and the forgiveness process, and yeah. so that's so important. Yeah, one of the yeah. one of the aspects I think, I think of this conversation uh, is. The realization, really, that all of us, I think, are capable of, if we really look at it, which is that people who commit crimes are are people. They're they're real people. They're 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 children of God. That somehow their minds or their actions got twisted. In some instances, many are in prisons for un, unjustly, really, for not having hurt anybody. Uh, but uh, even those who have committed violence are capable of, of turning that around. They're capable because that's the human spirit. That's, that's the potential of every human being. And so they, they are where they are. They did what they did because of certain circumstances. It's not to excuse it. People are still responsible. But learning to take that responsibility will choicefully in a, in a healthy direction, in a contributing kind of direction, is something that everybody can learn. Everybody can, so to speak, be rehabilitated if, mm -hmm. if, mm -hmm. uh, if given the right opportunity. Well, we see it so all the time. So much of the criminal justice system is really about punishment now. Right. Mm -hmm. It's about punishing. And, well, ta and, 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 and such is life that it's how you get back up again. And we can all fall. We all do fall. Right. But how do you, mistakes. how do we get back up again? And who helps us get back up again? You know, get and, and stand up stronger the second time. But so often we see celebrities who slip and fall and get punished. And then they're celebrated when they come back and they make a return and they get their careers back together. Um, that is that's a privilege that uh, they have because of their wealth and connections. Correct. People who don't have that privilege, when they fall, they fall, yeah. and there's nobody to help pick them back up or celebrate them making any changes. They, they can't get jobs. They, they they're discarded. They, they're, when, once somebody's given a lengthy prison sentence, they're basically discarded. We mm -hmm. don't think about them again. Mm -hmm. They don't deserve our thoughts. They've done this terrible thing, and so you know, they're sent away forever. And well, the, yes, and, and also this, the system, as we see, is yeah. needs a, a little readjustment. And, um, you know, we'll see how these, these next elections go. And, and, and I think that's one way to change things also, with, with representation. And, uh, but the conversation yeah. can lead to, you know, the right representation and right direction of, of these thoughts and, and conscious raising issues. Yeah. Uh, f to deal with people on a much more uh, restorative measure rather than dis destroy, yes. you know, is rather than destroying mm -hmm. uh, any chances of re recoup or, or restorative measures, um, you know, to allow that to happen. And that's part of the, the uh, right. you know, if you want to call it the human spirit, is to give the person the chance to experience, you know, someone gets sick, you don't throw, you know, forget about them. And uh, you try to heal them and bring them back and, and, uh, and uh, mm -hmm. wish them well-being. And, and it, wish takes them well a, being. it takes the intention of a community to, to do that, to, to change the kinds of policies and mm -hmm. the kinds of institutions and, um, that could foster you know, a rehabilitative intention for what happens when people are, commit a crime. Yeah. Right. You know, in some countries, there's very powerful experiments with doing that, that have been going on for years, and they, they have great success. It's a totally different orientation for what hap what what's done by the system when somebody commits a crime. Yeah. Right. How they relate to that person and what the, the consequences are. It isn't that they don't remove them to, to, from doing more harm, but the intention is to rehabilitate, to, to make right. where possible. Wherever that's possible. I, I've learned in, at Bedford that a lot of a lot of women that are incarcerated there are victims of abuse. A very high mm -hmm. percentage themselves are victim of abuse, mm -hmm. um, or are mentally ill for right. other reasons, and so they're not getting the, the mm -hmm. kind of help that they need behind bars. And yeah, and, and they, abuse leads getting, to trauma, sure. and trauma leads to psychological 
shift right. and and that needs to be adjusted yeah. and, and it's it needs to be uh, called what it's called and uh, an abuse is trauma right. for, for the victim right. Yeah. Right. so in, in some ways people who commit crimes are also victims of a system they're victims of a unbalanced mm -hmm. system mm -hmm. and often a, a misrepresented uh, or misrepresented uh, against the system mm -hmm. Uh, which leads to a lot of uh, unjust, yeah. unjust uh, conclusions. Yeah. Yeah. And a lot of, a lot of, it's frequently been observed that the abused bec has a tendency to become an abuser. Mm -hmm. yeah. Oh, it's, it's, oh there are so, statistics, yes. Yeah. Yeah. So but, a strong indication that when somebody's abused and there's no healing, they have a tendency to act that out upon somebody else. Sometimes yeah. it's child abuse. Passed on. Which I also comes into, uh, not to interrupt, but it also comes into the forgiveness. The abuser has, and the abused, the abuser, forgiveness. Uh -huh. There has to be some sort of understanding and, and uh, relationship that shifts also for the victim mm. to become, uh, to transcend that. Mm. The victim. Yeah, it's a very hard. I think, difficult and I think challenging yeah, process. It's, it, but it, it is always yeah. it is always available as yeah. as options, you know, yeah. for, for individuals for sure. to work through. Right. I think it's not excusing the action that if they've been abused and they become an abuser, yeah. they're not forgiven for the abuse that they've yeah. done. They still have to be accountable for that. But there's our ability to have empathy for the the, the circumstances that cause them to become that way and then to offer some other kind of solutions mm -hmm. than prison um, or uh, other services once right. they're in prison, you right. know, just, yeah. A whole I, different I, way to look at it. Yeah, and I definitely have said uh, in my speech that I'm preparing for this evening, I, I definitely don't have the answers. So I really think it's so beautiful for the community to come. Everybody has a different way of looking at yeah, it, a different right. way of helping us to think about it. Mm -hmm. So I think that's, be yeah, really that's why I, I, what I love the way you organize this around the idea of a conversation. It's not like people, there will be speakers, but it isn't that the speakers are aiming to tell people what they should think. Right. It's rather to encourage thoughtfulness right. and attention and awareness and for each person to share what they come to in that reflection and, and that's how we learn from each other. And I think through that, society evolves a little more quickly yeah it's exciting it's exciting well nyack is the place where you see for many events that are national uh where you see people standing across the street with their mm -hmm. signs mm -hmm. you know um i was there the other day mm -hmm. <laughs> it's quite it's quite an occurrence and and uh also larger events that happen at memorial park when uh, pete seeger right. graced mm -hmm. the stage mm -hmm. everyone's Waited around for that was the healthcare rally. Right. Yeah. That was yeah. Very exciting. And I thought I thought Nyack, if any place this would be happening, and there it is. Yeah. And uh, I could see more of that happening uh, in our yeah. little village here, mm -hmm. uh, setting Maybe the stage. We can stage. get together and plan something. Yeah. yeah. I don't see why not. We have a, a, a variety of yeah. causes, uh, as always. Once again, but this evening and this cause is a conversation about restorative justice and how individuals and communities can deal with violent crime. September 20th at the Nyack Center. Be there at 6.30 uh, at 58 Depew Street at the corner of South Broadway. And uh, once again, our our guest speakers, uh, our MC is... Eve Ensler. We're fortunate to have Eve, Eve Ensler as the MC for the evening. A winning playwright, performer, and activist, Katie Kitchen. Katie. Katie's actually coming in from Colorado for this event. She's so excited about it. She went through the Victim Services Program in Texas. Her father was uh, murdered in his driveway by a 19-year-old boy who was trying to steal his wallet and watch. And uh, in the struggle, he shot Katie's father. And um, Katie uh, immediately recognized that there were several victims in this crime and after many years uh, of an unsettled feeling she went through this program where she was able to meet her father's perpetrator and um, and she's now advocating for his release from prison I think it's pretty a beautiful story that she has to share and um, so I'm so grateful that she's coming and uh, as well as Nina 
uh, Vilma Balmaceda from Nyack College. She's a professor at Nyack College, and she teaches about restorative justice. So she's just going to give a little background of, as to what this is and maybe what society's, you know, sort of introduce this idea of what society's obligation is to people who have reformed in the system. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, it's just amazing, amazing speakers. And Alan is going to facilitate the community mm -hmm. uh, dialogue, so. Who has a new book coming out, we'd like to mention, uh, before we leave you. Uh, but be sure to jot down September 20th, 6.30. Might as well just say 6.30. 6.30. South Broadway and Depew um, at the Nyack Center for a conversation about restorative justice. And uh, Alan Levin will be um, a discussion facilitator, and he has a new book. Um, might you have uh, copies of the book at the event? Possibly. Mm -hmm. He's thinking about it. Yeah. Uh, I don't want to distract from the the, folks. the name of his new book is Crossing the Boundary, Jewish Leaders of Other Spiritual Paths. And Alan, if you'd like to tell us just a, a little bit about the contents of your book. Uh, well, um, okay. The, uh, the book uh, involves my own exploration of my own path as, a, as uh, having been raised in a Jewish family as a Jew and having taken a, a different road as far as my spiritual religious practice. And, uh, but what I did in the book was I interviewed 14 other uh, people who are spiritual teachers, uh, who are leaders of a particular religious or spiritual path, uh, each of them having grown up as I did, uh, Jewish, and yet now might be a, uh, a sheikh, uh, a Sufi peer, uh, a pagan witch, uh, a Buddhist uh, teacher of one or Zen or, or insight meditation, uh, a Catholic priest, a shaman, um, an interfaith minister. So they're all in, in different spiritual paths. And so I'm ta reflecting on what it means to cross that kind of a boundary uh, from uh, one's initial group identity to um, what might have been in childhood the other, something other than oneself. So, mm -hmm. in, in self discovery. Uh, there is, a, there is a, a connection to all of what we've been talking with about. Forgiveness. But I won't go that far. No, oh, I know. That. Yes, of course not. <laughs> but with, but forgiveness, with forgiveness opens up exactly. a whole uh, uh, n another dimension yeah. of existence, yeah. Yeah. in one way to say it. Thank you, Richard. <laughs> So we're glad we could get together today to d have a conversation about a conversation about restorative justice, how individuals and communities can deal with violent crime. And Nyack is going to be having this conversation on September 20th at 6.30, the Nyack Center, Depew and South Broadway, right here in the village of Nyack. Mm -hmm. So thank you once again. Thank uh, you, and if someone wants thank to get in touch with you, how can they get in touch with you, Jennifer? I uh, put my email address here. It's jenjulia, J-E-N-J-U-L-I-A at AOL.com. Or they can call the Nyack Center, which is 845-358-2600. And there's a Facebook page. And the Facebook page, <laughs> a conversation about restorative justice. I was just there. It looks wonderful. Uh, log on, say hi, and tell us you'll be there this yeah. September 20th. Okay, you guys, can, you. You, you can thank them. Stay here for a second. Thank you. Right Thanks, Alan. Thank you. Yeah, thank Good. you. And please bring your book. On, on. It's not just radio, it's Rockland World Radio. Rockland World Radio. Rockland World Radio.